Hey everybody, welcome back to the Veterans Ham Shack. I'm Jeremy, KF4CHW. Today I'm gonna to be putting up an antenna, my Chameleon MCOM 2, I've had it about seven years. I uh, got it as a bundle um, whenever I bought one of my other radios. And um, I've never made a contact on the antenna, I'll put it that way. I have had it up one other time. Um, it's kind of a funny story. I just moved into this house. Um, I don't have an HOA, so it's not like I had any restrictions. Um, but I thought, hey, I'll just throw this up in the attic, no big deal, you know, that way I didn't have to run a long feed line to it, that sort of thing. Um, and I climbed up in the attic. This antenna is about 60 feet long. Um, so I strung it up all the way to the end of my house and back. Now, the problem with that is, is um, my attic does not have plywood down throughout the whole part of the attic. You know, it's only got one section there where the storage part is. Uh, the rest of it's just open rafters and insulation. Um, so in order for me to get the antenna from one end to the other, it's 60 feet long, I had to kind of balance myself on the rafters from one end of the house to the other. I did that just fine, made it down to the other end of the house, came back, <clears throat> I was actually stringing it up and getting ready to hook the feed line into it and um, inadvertently stepped backwards and off of the plywood and I fell through my ceiling into the living room. Um, I didn't get hurt, thankfully. Um, but it was an expensive mistake, I'll put it, to, put it that way. Um, to the tune of about a thousand bucks, you know, I had to have the ceiling repaired. Um, it's a textured ceiling, so it had to be matched, and I had to buy a special brush that had to come from wherever. They just didn't sell it at Lowe's, I don't know. Um, and then I had to have my ceilings painted, not only in my living room, but all throughout everything that's connected to that, which was my hallway and kitchen and dining room. So anyway, costly mistake. I actually left this antenna up in the attic for years after that. I, it left kind of a bad taste in my mouth. I didn't even want to go up and fool with it. Not only that, but I had to balance myself again all the way back down there and back um, to get it down. So managed to do that safely. Um, so anyway, this has been in my closet for a good six, seven years now. I, I hadn't had it long whenever I felt it in my ceiling. Um, so got it out the other day, kind of devised a little bit of a plan to get it up in the air outside. And um, we'll see how it works. Um, I'll be going over some of the technical stuff next, but uh, eventually we'll get it up and tuned up and see how it goes. All right, let's take a quick look at the operator's manual for the MCOM 2. Uh, this is an older model of the MCOM 2 that I have. I got it in 2017. There are newer ones out there. So in the introduction, it says the antenna will operate from 1.8 to 54 megahertz, including 160 meter through 6 meter amateur bands. This says without any adjustment with a wide range antenna tuner. Um, I think you'll probably need an antenna tuner, at least I will, for the configuration that I'll be using. As far as configurations goes, there's three. The horizontal invis, the sloping wire, and the inverted L. Um, I chose the horizontal invis just because it was the easiest way for me to get it set up in my yard. Um, I'm lacking in tall trees um, on my property right now. The former owners that had it cut them all down. Um, I have some Bradford pears that are getting kind of tall, but they're also very flimsy, I guess you would say. They're, they're not good. They're not made good for um, antenna supports, that's for sure. Um, so anyway, with the horizontal invis, um, it recommends that you get the antenna itself about 10 to 12 feet up in the air. And I've done that by using a pole out in my yard, again, that the former owners had out there. It's actually a 4x4 four four with a birdhouse on it. And then I've added a flagpole um, to the side of it, which gets it a little bit higher up in the air. Um, so anyway, the insulator end will be attached out in the yard. The antenna itself will be stretched back to the matching um, transformer that I'll have on the side of my house here. Um, <clears throat> so in the... Um, directions here. It says the counterpoise, a counterpoise wire, wire with a length of 50 to 55 feet is recommended. If a counterpoise wire is not used, the coaxial cable must be 25 to 100 feet in length as the shield of the coax provides the counterpoise. So I've got a 50 foot coax cable um, hooked up to mine, but I am also using the optional 50 foot counterpoise. Um, that kit did come with my antenna, so I uh, might as well use it. So anyway, other configurations, the sloping wire, 
Again, this one requires that you get the antenna a little further up off the ground than what I'm able to here. And then with the inverted L, again, this one also recommends you get it up about 25 feet in the air. <clears throat> as far as specifications goes, again, the frequencies are 1.8 megahertz through 54 megahertz continuous. Um, this one says a wide range antenna tuner or coupler is required. It's a little contradictory to what it said in the introduction, but anyway, regardless, I, I do agree with this one here that, that a tuner would probably be required for some of the bands. Um, as far as power goes, 250 watt continuous duty cycle, that's for CW, AM, FM, and RTTY. And then 500 watt intermittent duty cycle with single sideband and single sideband based digital modes. As far as the SWR goes, I'll actually get my antenna analyzer out and show you exactly where my antenna is. But this graph, the red line, is the SWR, and it shows it goes from a SWR of about one or so here, looking at probably the 10 meter band, maybe here, 12 meters or so, and then all the way up to greater than seven SWR looking towards the six meter band here anyway. We'll see exactly what my antenna analyzer has to say about that. And uh, I'll be right back to show you guys, thanks. Okay, so first of all, let me just start out by saying ignore the tragedy of an above ground pole in the background. Um, I got a hole in the liner somewhere I got to dig out and uh, patch. So we'll see, it's still early spring. So I'm gonna wait a little bit before I do that. Anyway, here's the transformer part of the MCOM2. And I've got it strung up on the side of the house here. It does recommend a choke um, at the feed point here, which I've done. And then kind of see the wire here. And I got it running over there to the birdhouse on that flagpole, like I said. So coming back. Here we are again. I tried to keep the transformer away from the house and I tried to keep the wire away from anything that it could touch. Um, it does recommend using the counterpoise, so I have one about 50 feet back that way. And then got the coax just running out here out of my bedroom window there. Okay, so here we are now with the MCOM2 hooked up to my antenna analyzer. This is um, an antenna analyzer I picked up about 10 years ago. It's made by UKITS. Um, it's FG01 Alpha. So it measures 1 through 35 megahertz, so I won't be able to do the 6 meter band. Uh, from what I understand, this is a, I guess, precursor to the Nano VNA. Um, I bought this antenna analyzer, I think, in 2014, maybe. So it's, it's old. I'm kind of surprised the battery works as good as it does, but anyway, um, it served me well. So, <clears throat> as you can see right now, I've got us um, turned over to the 10 meter band. And all of these frequencies that I'll be showing you guys SWRs on is for the general class, because that's what I am right now. Um, so anyway, as you can see here on the 10 meter band, starting at 28300, um, got about a 1.1, 1.2 SWR. Um, there's a dial across the band here up to the 29, the upper end for me is 29,700. So it goes up to about a SWR 1.3, not bad. Okay, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the 12 meter band also. So here's the 24,930, about a 1.8 SWR. And as I tune across this up to the 24,990, which is the upper end for me, stays about the same, 1.8. Okay. It's going up to the 15 meter band here, 21,275. It's showing about a 1.4 SWR. And this one goes up to 21,450. up to the 21,450, eh, 1.3 to 1.5 megahertz, I'm sorry, SWR, not bad. Okay. All right, now let's check out the 17 meter band. 
the 18.110, I should do here. No, 1.4 SWR. And this one is kind of odd, it goes up to 1.68, so I'm just going to do the 1.7. So as you can see, it's about 1.4 SWR across the band here. Okay, then for the 20 meter band, um, starting at 14.225, oh, got an SWR of about 1.8, a little higher than some of the other bands so far. And let's fix this to where I can dial up the band a little bit quicker. <clears throat> so we'll go up to the 14.350. Um, SWR is staying about 1.8 and 355. It's getting up 1.8. You can see there. Okay, and then we'll go on to the 40 meter band. Mm, hang on. Actually, I'm going to skip this one. Here's the 40 meter band. The 7.175. Um, about a 2.6 SWR on this one. This will turn red, the SWR will, whenever it gets kind of too high. So it's staying in the green. I guess that's okay. You probably will need a tuner for this one. And let's fix this too. Oops. Oops. I need to get me a fancier antenna analyzer. This one, again, is a little cumbersome, but it works. So dial across the... 40 meter band here up to 7.300. So yours is getting a little bit better here as I go. Uh, so 2.5. So what were we at here? The 175, uh, 2.6. 2.5, 2.6 on a 40 meter band, not bad. Okay. So. Next, we'll do, we'll skip this one too. Let's go on to the 80 meter band. <clears throat> this is a little high here. Um, SWR 3.5, you can see it turned red on me there. And let's just kind of go up the band here up to 4.0. So about a 3.5 SWR, so for 80 meters, I'd probably need to use my antenna tuner. And then last but not least, we'll do the 160 meters. <coughs> Excuse me. So this one goes from 1.8 to 2. Let's go here. And this SWR, so 1.8 is about 4.4, 4.6 or so. It's lucky the, the graph here is getting a little better as I go up, but it's still in the red. And 2.00. That's where we'll stop here. And then about a three. Where's your call sign? Hello, Okay, I got KC9 Zen uh, 2 Alpha Charlie 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 CHW Jeremy in Eastern Kentucky, my first time checking in. I uh, just got an antenna up in the air, got my radios out of the closet, and decided to uh, hop on and see what was going on. Well, greatly appreciate it. If you would throw your handle out there, you may have, but I didn't catch it. I got a little bit of lightning static crashes that covered part of that uh, last transmission up there. But I do have a Kilo a Foxtrot 4 Charlie Hotel Whiskey QSL. Yes, sir. 
Kilo Foxtrot 4, Charlie Hotel Whiskey. This is Jeremy in Elkhorn City, Kentucky. Okay, Jeremy down there in Kentucky. Well, uh, short, uh, short bounce today ain't the best there, Jeremy. Uh, I, I know over in Ohio I kind of lost contact with a couple people over there. Uh, but uh... All right, guys, so that'll do it. Um, so I was able to make some contacts on 80 meters and 40 meters. Um, sorry about the 80 meter contact there. Um, I tried to use a Blue Yeti into my DSLR camera. I watched a couple videos on it. It seemed to work okay whenever I did the antenna analyzer portion, but uh, for some reason, whenever I did the 80 meter, um, it really messed up. And then I um, had actually made some other contacts using that microphone with this, and it also messed up whenever I was talking. I guess I had it set wrong. I don't know. Anyway, it ruined a couple of the the clip so you know I, I've included the 80 meter one and the 40 I actually got on 20 meters for a little while and um, you know there's several people out there this weekend doing contesting so I didn't really want to jump in and, and bother those guys so I um, feel pretty confident though that I can get through you know pretty much any of these bands now so um, you know I, I've been in the market for a, a permanent antenna at my house you know I've been kind of thinking about a vertical um, I, you know, considered the DX Commander, um, you know, a cobweb antenna, looked at some hex beams and that sort of thing. Um, but I gotta tell you, you know, I'm pretty impressed with this, this, um, Chameleon MCOM 2. I mean, it's very wide band, you know, six meters through 160. And, um, for the most part, I'm getting contacts on every one of those with very little use of my antenna tuner. So, um, I give it five stars, I guess, other than the fact that I fell through my ceiling, you know, uh, putting the thing up first time. Um, but anyway, it's working well, probably full with it the rest of the day. And, um, you know, I'm not sure which, if, if I'll end up going with another antenna or not, maybe. Um, we'll see. Uh, but as of right now, this is probably what I'm going to stick with for the next little bit. Uh, I'm interested in the digital modes, so... You know, we'll, we'll see how that ends up going. You know, I'm going to take a look at some stuff today and, and um, you know, maybe look into FT8 and that sort of thing. I've never done any of that. But anyway, guys, thanks again for, the, for coming back to my channel. Um, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. <clears throat> anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Again, this is Jeremy. I'm KF4CHW. And until uh, next time.